Very good morning to you all. I thank the sages for this opportunity, and I appreciate all of you who have stayed back at this time, uh, especially when those who have fled probably heard about the weather report of the snow from tomorrow. So I'm going to share with you our experience of ileal interposition with a BMI-adjusted sleeve gastrectomy for type 2 diabetes. And we've been working on this for the last eight, eight years. I have no disclosures. The options we have for, uh, for diabetics who are obese, the procedures which are done more commonly, you can see them on the left, the sleeve, the bypass, and now many parts of the world, the mini gastric bypass. And on the right, you have the varying uh, uh, modifications and newer procedures. Now the application for diabetes it, with all this has been for BMI more than 35. What about the lower BMI diabetics? They need a procedure with proven safety at lower BMIs. So true metabolic procedure should be possible or available for anyone whose diabetes is uncontrolled or poorly controlled because the emphasis is not the weight. So you do need the right people, but you also need the right procedure. And this is the pioneer of ileal interposition, Dr. Aureo de Paula from Goiania in Brazil, who is what I call a thinker surgeon. He has moved the, uh, the, uh, uh, all the research on the diabetic front, even amongst the physicians. He's pushed the bar, and I was fortunate to be trained by him in 2007. This is the famous uh, publication by DeFronzo, a diabetes researcher, which shows these eight very important factors, the ominous octet of diabetes, explaining the pathophysiology of diabetes. One very important thing to note, surprisingly, BMI is nowhere included in the pathophysiology of diabetes. And if one can learn from the duodenal switch, which uh, seem to have the highest rate of remission and the best long-term results. And if you can avoid extensive uh, bypass of the small bowel to avoid so much of malabsorption, you could do a procedure of the ileal interposition with the BMI-adjusted sleeve. And this, uh, we started after clinical trials and there have been publications and trials in Brazil and India. So the secret was to use the ileum without the extensive amount of bypass. Just like in the duodenal switch, you just have to separate the ileum at the lower end and swing it across to an astomosis with the jejunum. So you have only an exclusion of 50 centimeters of jejunum in this version of the diverted ileal interposition. This is to show you that one which doesn't have any diversion where you do a BMR-adjusted sleeve, and the uh, ileal segment is placed in line in the jejunal area. You get ghrelin reduction, more importantly, faster gastric emptying, and the GLP-1 increase as soon as your, uh, your nutrients, which are undigested, they stimulate the ileal segment. So this is to show you how it looks, and you can notice that there are three transactions and three anastomoses in this. All the anastomoses are in the mid and lower abdomen. Now, when you have adverse factors in diabetes, you need a stronger procedure, where the duration of diabetes is more than 10 years, BMI is lower, dependence on insulin is present, and the stimulated C-peptide, which is an important assessment uh, of pancreatic function is less than four. Other factors to be kept in mind are low fasting serum insulin, older age groups, and strong family histories. So the stronger option is a diverted one as compared with the non-diverted one, and most of our work involves the diverted or the duodenal ileal interposition, where a 170 centimeter segment of the ileum is, is taken from the distal ileal area 30 centimeters proximal to ileocecal valve, and anastomose between the first part of duodenum, which was transected, 
and at 50 centimeters on the jet genome from the ligament of trites. Already Dipola had, had done a randomized trial which compared these two versions and he showed very obviously that the diverted version had a very high rate of remission as compared with the non-diverted. And these are the different centers in the world doing ileal interposition. The steps, as I said, they involved making a BMI-adjusted sleeve and oversewing the staple line, transaction of the duodenum in the diverted version, uh, formation of a window in the uh, transmesocolic uh, area and getting the uh, gastrodonal sleeve in the lower abdomen, and then the three anastomos in the lower abdomen, ileoileostomy with the mesenteric closure, duodenoileostomy with the mesenteric closure, and the ileojejunostomy to complete that with the closure. So this is how you can see in the figure uh, lower left, we can see everything is in the lower abdomen after the sleeve has been done, duodenum is transacted, and all the three anastomoses and the lower abdomen. And this is how we adjust to the BMI in the normal weight, obese, or the morbidly obese patients. The port positions are as follows. There are six ports, three are five millimeters, two are 12 millimeters for the staplers, and one is for the scope. Uh, a subgroup of diabetics could be focused on for selection for such procedures, where diabetes with morbid obesity or with dyslipidemia, heart disease, hypertension, with microvascular comorbidities, nephropathy, retinopathy, or those who have hypoglycemia and glucose fluctuations, uh, those who have uncontrolled A1C in spite of high doses of drugs and insulin. And these are some of the patient selection criteria we've used. One has to make sure you exclude type 1 diabetes or the latent autoimmune diabetes of the adult, the LADA. And uh, if there are patients with very low C-peptide, we would exclude them. Mechanisms of action, there's caloric restriction, which is mechanical and more importantly functional, ghrelin reduction, incretin response with GLP-1 and PYY, and increased serum bile acids and changes in microbiota. The important aspect of the, of the bile acids, when, the, when there is a reabsorption of the bile acids, this leads to a reduction in endoplasmic reticulum stress. And this in the hepatic cells, pancreatic cells, and in the ad adipocytes improves insulin sensitivity. In the islets of the pancreas, it improves uh, secretion of insulin and a preservation of the beta cell mass. And these are long-term results published by Oro de Paula over six years with maintenance, good maintenance of remission. Again, to show in all weight ranges, the normal weight, overweight, and obese, with very uh, equivalent and high rates of remission. And this was his publication of his overall results in 2012, where he had 86.4% of his patients who discontinued all their drugs. Some of our results which we have, uh, have published, the unpublished uh, information that I have for you is, this is an analysis of 490 of our patients uh, over five years. Uh, important to note, duration of diabetes, 9.5 years, BMI 29, and two-thirds of the patients had BMI less than 35. All of them were, uh, were diabetics which were poorly controlled with a mean A1C of 9.8%. Comorbidities of hypertension, dyslipidemia, and microalbuminuria. And a primary outcomes we looked at was remission of diabetes, that is HbA1c less than 6 without any drugs. And secondary outcomes were changes in components of metabolic syndrome. And the results, we have mean follow-up of two years. There was improvement uh, in all the glycemic parameters and complete remission of diabetes in 72% with 81% having partial remission. 
uh, in the complications uh, and results, uh, the total weight loss was 23.5% mean, resolution of hypertension 92%, dyslipidemia and microalbuminuria. And at two years, the mean fall in HbA1c, 26.5%, was much more than the reduction in the BMI. And the main post-operative problems we had were intolerance of food, seen in 12%, diarrhea and abdominal pain in 4%, and the total complication rate 7.75%. Mortality rate from the procedure is 0.2%. This is a publication from Aureo de Pola, 454 of his consecutive patients with morbidity and mortality that is comparable to most other bariatric surgeries. This was to show that in all the weight ranges, the lean patients, overweight, and the obese, there was an equivalent response and result and control of HbA1c. And this is some more of our data showing the technical feasibility which we have published. An important aspect was to show that functional restriction works much better than mechanical restriction in any of the surgeries for remission of diabetes. Now the logical question was, why not do something simpler? Why not do a procedure that one is already very comfortable with and stay in the comfort zone? Why not do something very simple, like the sleeve or the balloon or electrical stimulation? And you have all the bariatric procedures and the MGB and the DJB. But diagnosis is not easy, isn't it? Accurate assessment is very important in diabetics. And why is it that when diagnosis was uncertain in earlier years, one explored the patient? In cancer treatment, the treatment varies according to the stage of cancer, but why is it that in diabetics, they all seem to be the same for a bariatric surgeon? All are given the same operation usually. So scoring systems that exist, establishing the severity of diabetes and the predictive factors for remission there's the ABCD score by Dr. Lee, the diagram score, and we have our diabetes remission score. And these are the factors that we showed having a simplified rem uh, scoring system of one and two with seven factors, which would give you a grading of the severity. And based on that, one could choose a procedure based on the severity of diabetes. So shortcuts obviously would be dangerous trying to select just something that's very simple. Bariatric procedures have shown to have good resolution of diabetes, especially gastric bypass and the BPD. Uh, but there are worldwide reports of recurrence within three to five years, and nutritional problems have been increasing. And why is it that in a RCT from Phil Shaw's group, diabetic remission as at three years was only 36% as compared to many of the 80, 85% reports that we have. And this shows how uh, with a duodenal switch, the high remission and maintenance, and this was a publication from Ferranini and Scopinaro showing with BMI less than 30, diabetes duration 14 to 18 years, remission 40% with a BPD. In a similar group, BMI 29, which we have published, Duration of diabetes, 15 years. Remission with ileal interposition of 70.5% without the nutritional issues. And this shows very clearly how the morbidity nutritionally is very high with the BPD and DS. This is to show a study with d xylose estimation of the malabsorption that happens with the bypass and not with the ileal interposition. And uh, this is a publication from Milan, Italy, Professor Foskey's group showing ileal interposition having no malabsorption. So how much more proof do we surgeons need? In conclusion, ileal interposition can be used for treatment of type 2 diabetes in all BMI groups, especially BMI less than 35, technically feasible with comparable safety, high rates of diabetes remission even in severe diabetics, and comorbidity resolution is very good with minimal or rare malabsorption. Diabetes is not a very simple issue of just rise in blood sugar. It's as complex as this, just the part one. And different approaches for ileal interposition could be completely laparoscopic. You could use a hybrid approach, do the sleeve by laparoscopy, extend the vertical incision, and then do an open uh, for the ileal part or you can do the whole operation robotic for the ileal part. 
So that's the small incision for the hybrid. This was for the sleeve gastrectomy, and that was increased, and uh, that's the final incision. So what, any GI surgeon would be able to do it. So the take-home message is you really want to treat diabetes effectively, assess the severity of diabetes, choose the appropriate procedure, do the right thing. Are you not a surgeon with a lion's heart? So include ileal interposition in your team's armamentarium. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, actually.